Welcome. In this brief video, we'll show you how to assemble your flight box from Open Flight Solutions. So the first thing we're going to do is open and unbox the, uh, the kit. So ordinarily this would be more difficult, but I've already made this a little easier. So open it up and you'll see it opens like so. The sides down, put that up. Inside you'll see the actual uh, open uh, flight solutions flight box case, which has a bunch of parts in it. You'll see a USB cable, a couple of antennas, and the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and take these parts out of this box. The other thing you'll find in there is the assembly guide. Um, it's basically the same thing that we're going to go through in this video, but in paper form, so you can kind of check things off as you go. Makes a good checklist, helps you identify parts if you're not familiar with them. Here's a clearer view of the four main components that came inside that box. Then open it up. Inside you'll find a business card, a fan, a pair of pigtails if you have a dual band, or a single pigtail if you have a single band, a Wi-Fi adapter, a GPS, either one or two radio modules, again depending on whether you have the single band or the dual band. If you look carefully you'll see there that those uh, show 978 and 1090 megahertz. That's the, uh, the different frequencies that these support. There's also a small bag of screws and other hardware in there. So we'll take all of that out. You'll also find, last but not least, the data card, which is going to go into the system. So you want to make sure that you have all of these things. Okay, so next, open the pie. You'll find that there's a tab at the top. Pop it out. You'll find a static bag inside. Inside the static bag, you open it up. Being careful, you don't uh, necessarily have to worry about static, but you don't necessarily want to be you know, scuffing your feet when you do this. And there it is. That's the Raspberry Pi. To point out a few features of the Raspberry Pi, right there you have the power connector. That is the HDMI connector. That's not even visible from uh, a flight box kit because it's actually enclosed inside. That's the audio out jack. That is the Ethernet jack. Those are two USB ports there and two more USB ports over here for a total of four USB ports. And there you actually see the pin header. That's where you uh, would connect accessories, including some of the things that we're planning on building in the not too distant future. If you turn it over, the one thing you'll want to see there is on the bottom, that is where the data card goes. That's the data card slot. So, that is your Raspberry Pi. For the next step, you're only going to need a few things. You'll of course need the Raspberry Pi, the GPS, the Wi-Fi adapter, and either one or two radio modules, and either one or two uh, pigtail cables. So following the instructions that are in the assembly guide, we're going to start by putting in the 978 megahertz radio first. It goes into the center bottom USB port, like so. Next, get the 1090 megahertz module and plug it into the bottom right mod uh, USB port. Get the uh, Wi-Fi module, plug the Wi-Fi module into the top right port, and take the GPS and plug that into the center top port. Okay, now that you have those on there, it's time to attach the pigtails. We're going to put one pigtail on each one of these radio modules, and you'll see that there's connectors here and here for them. We're going to start by doing the one that's on the outside here, and that's going to go to the 1090 megahertz. So plug that in, and then route it so that it goes back through, and see how that's connected so it's sort of uh, laid in between that USB tower and that uh, Ethernet port. That way it gets over to the right-hand side. Then take the other um, cable, pigtail, and plug it into the radio module here in the middle. That's our, 10, our 978 megahertz. And that's going to go up the side right here when we actually put it into the case. So taking a look at it again, hold it up a little closer so you can see. We've got our uh, 1090 and our 978 megahertz radio modules with their cables. 1090 routes like so, 978 routes like so. And you'll see how that fits in when we put it into the case. The next thing you'll want to do is turn the Pi over and you're going to take the data card. Make sure that it is facing so that the metal stripes that you see there 
are actually facing towards the, the board, slide it in and you'll feel it click into place. You can unlatch it and latch it and you want it latched into place because that's where it needs to be in order to, uh, to boot up because that's basically the hard drive for this thing. So there we go. This assembly is done. All right, the next step is going to be to install the, uh, the assembly we just put together, the pie and all of its parts, into the case. Now, if you look, you'll see that there are four little screw points in here, um, and those match up to the four screw holes that you see here and here and here and here. Now, when this goes in, it's going to go in at a bit of an angle because we've got to fit our audio connector, our HDMI connector, and that power connector into the spots that you see here and here and here on the case. So lay it at a little bit of an angle, keep the cables up out of your way, set it down, and it should just snap into place. You shouldn't have to use any real force. It'll lay down if you get it lined up right. The next step is to put the uh, screws in to hold the pie in place. To do that, I highly recommend a small Phillips screwdriver with a uh, magnetic tip and we're going to use these small black um, number 440 uh, panhead screws. Once you have the pie screwed into place, the next step is going to be to attach these pigtail cables, uh, the bulkhead connectors, to the actual wall of the case. So you'll want to take off the hardware. Each one of these comes with a uh, um, lock washer and a nut. So you'll take that off of both of these. Okay, make sure your cable's still routed the way you want. Put the 1090 megahertz into place. Put the lock washer on. Put the nut on. Do the same thing. We're going to route this over here out on the edge of the case. You see how that fits in behind that Ethernet jack? And then pop it out. You want to make sure you're not rubbing on any of the, uh, the parts on the pie when you do that. So then put that into place. At this point, then, you'll want to use either a pair of pliers, maybe needle nose on the inside and regular pliers on the outside. Or if you've got them, nine, uh, pardon me, uh, five sixteenths inch wrenches or sockets to tighten this up. Just want to get it tight enough that the bulkhead connector won't spin when you try to put the antennas on it. There we go. Done. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the fan on. To do that, take a quick look at how this sets up. Notice that that lines up with that. So we're going to see how the fan sits. We'll open this up the way it's actually going to be in production and take the fan. And you'll notice that the fan has the sticker on one side. You're going to want the sticker to be facing down because air goes out through the fan. So we'll there we go. You can see how it sort of sits on there. Take this and take one of our long um, number 440 screws and pop it through. Tighten those up a little bit. There you go. Now notice, you might want to put a dab of um, Loctite, or perhaps even a, just a drop of super glue on each one of those four points. Now the next thing we're going to do is hook it up to uh, the pin header on the pie. So we'll turn them both this way so you can see. And if you look at the pie, kind of hard to see here, but you'll see that there's two rows of um, pins. There's the ones on the middle and then ones up against the wall. We're going to use the ones up against the wall here 
And we're going to skip the first one and we're going to connect it to the second pin down. And we're going to put the red on that second pin and the black on the third pin on that wall. Take a look at the diagram in the uh, assembly guide for some instructions there. So. Now, before we screw it down tight, we'll actually want to put the USB power to it and make sure that that works properly. So, take the USB cable, make sure you got it the right way, and plug that into power. And you'll see that it started to spin. And the machine booted up. And the nice solid red light, the green flashing light there indicates that it's going through its boot cycle. And if you look here, you'll see there's a blue blinking light, and that indicates that the, the system has actually started acting as an access point. So, go ahead and close that back up. We'll turn it off. Take the remaining three screws, okay, once we've got that done, the only thing that's left to do is the antennas. And if you'll remember, when we put this together, we put the um, system so that the UAT antenna, the 978 megahertz antenna, came down the side and it's right here. The UAT antenna is the one you see here with the yellow top yellow lines on the top. So we'll attach it first, make sure that it's rotated so that it so uh, can fold up, then attach the 1090, also making sure it can fold up, and there you go, a working flight box.